River State Governor Yesom Wike has endorsed his Lagos State counterpart Babajide Somolu for a second term in office, despite both governors coming from rival political parties. The endorsement also comes despite Wike's party, the People's Democratic Party, having a governorship candidate in Lagos, Olajide Adedimo. Well, Wike praised Somolu's leadership and said he was deserving of a second term. He was speaking as a special guest of honor at the annual conference of Committee of Wives of Legal State Officials. Well, he also touched on the presidential election, saying Nigeria does not need a president with ethnic mindset. Wiki and four other southern governors have been clamoring for the resignation of the party's national chairman, Iyoche Ayu. They want a southerner to chair Nigeria's major opposition party, the PDP. First Lady Aisha Buhari, who also joined the program virtually, also made a political comment while thanking Wike for supporting an APC governor. She said, as it depend them, it is sweet us well well. <laughs> I like to copy good things. I don't copy bad things. I don't copy ethnicity. I came here because I know the government of Lagos State and the people of Lagos State have something to offer for us to learn. If someone is not doing well, even if he belongs to my party, I won't come. So, for me, if you're in my party and you're not doing well, you will see me. If you're not in my party and you're doing well, you will see me. I'm in support of you. I don't want to talk the other one. <laughs> president that has the interest of Nigeria. A president that has experience in governance. A president that my bank can say, yes, I remove food. I mean, I put food on the top. We fight in security. That's what we do. Not some people are talking about ethnicity. No. As the dependent, <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us in Lagos. All right, to dissect all these stories, joining us on Newsnight tonight, Arise uh, Analyst, Professor Abiodun Adini, and Arise Director of News and Politics Editor, Somna Sambo. Thank you both of you, uh, gentlemen, uh, for joining us on Newsnight tonight. Um, Adeni, let me start with you. Uh, are we now beginning to hear from the three major contenders, the what and the how, uh, you know, that they will bring to bear if they become president in 2023? I mean, uh, Peter Obi actually declared the North. He says the North is a seat of wealth among, you know, all the things that we heard from him there. Uh, Tinubu said, I'll make the North a uh, hub of agriculture, agribusiness, while Atiku, of course, uh, you recall the gaff over the weekend. I wonder what else you make of what he said to the North. Are they saying what we want to hear, what Nigerians want to hear? Oh, well, it's um, an inter interesting development, no doubt, and it's also gratifying that we're getting to discuss, we're getting to the issues like we have always advocated. And of course, the, the aspirant and the contest candidates are becoming very, very specific, you know, uh, talking to some of the issues that are touching, you know, uh, questions around agriculture, questions around subsidy, uh, questions around the revitalization or revamping the economy, questions around insecurity. They are beginning to focus on it, you know. Um, that's the, what we have always, all, um, always desired, you know, but it just also goes beyond um, just preparing over these issues, just mentioning those, these issues. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we also need at some point the dissection of some of these issues. Not just um, promises, but, you know, but how will you go about implementing these promises, you know, because the argument in circles that some of these manifestos, you know, some of these are things that they parrot are actually um, not original to them, you know, um, things that have been prepared for them, maybe understandably so anyway, um, by experts, you know, but it's, it's, it's fine if experts prepare them, but of course the candidates also have to have very good understanding right. of uh, the documents, you know, so that um, they can take possession of it, they can take ownership of it, okay. internalize it, and be ready 
to tell us how, implement, how they will go about implementation and such that at the end of the day, uh, some of the points that are going to be raising will not be denied and we can hold them to account, you know, eventually. Asking them, you promise X and uh, A, B and C, you know, how are you go um, have you implemented A, okay. B and C as All a right. case could be okay. uh, going forward. Indeed. Uh, let's bring in our politics editor, Sumner Sambo. Yes, we can talk about the issues, but there's also the vehicle, the platform, the political parties that these politicians would use to get to power. Uh, they are not devoid of uh, drama, uh, interesting developments. Let's take the issue uh, of Governor Wike and Governor Sonwolu, two different parties. Mm. Uh, and Governor Wike endorsing Sonwolu today. Did that come to you as a surprise, uh, seeing that we saw Sonwolu a couple of weeks ago uh, commissioning projects in River State. And would you say that was a tacit endorsement of a Bola Tinubu in that soundbite we heard from Governor Wike? Yes, Adesua, it's um, obvious right now that uh, uh, Governor Nyesom Wike is beginning to uh, sleep on the same political bed with uh, the leaders of the All Progressives Congress based on what we've seen. Uh, formally today, and of course some of the moves that we are seeing earlier on, remember some of these um, APC governors, especially from the Southwest, had been um, going to River State to seek support and a sort of subtle endorsement for uh, Bola Tinobu's uh, presidency. And uh, uh, you, you can see what happened last time when uh, the people, uh, the governors visited, like Governor Akiri Dolu, Yuhasun Wolu, uh, and uh, Governor Fayemi, who just um, you know finished his uh, term, uh, and so in all of that, we had been seeing these moves. But uh, Wike is not coming out uh, frontally to say he is uh, um, supporting the APC now in terms of its presidential candidate. But from all these moves that we have seen, it looks uh, very clear now that uh, 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 Nyesom Wike has embraced uh, Tinubu's political camp because if you look at the rhetoric that was coming out of uh, the camp of Roti Miyamichi, former governor of um, uh, River State, who is also a political stakeholder in that state, uh, they were complaining that uh, uh, Tinobu's political camp and his governors were coming to his own state without you know, letting him know that they were coming and they were not sort of uh, conversing with him and his political team and including his governorship candidate, Tonye Ko. So from all of that, what we can see here is that the local politics of River State has been transplanted into the national space. So anything that's against Amechi, Governor Yeso Mwike will embrace it. And of course, you have seen it very clearly now that even uh, uh, Wike's uh, political camp is not coming out to hit at the APC. I mean, considering the political climate that we have right now, the APC, the PDP should have been hitting the APC very, very hard, especially in River State. The local politics there is not hitting hard at the APC. And then, with all of this move that we have seen, it's very, very clear that um, I think Abubakar is not going to find it very easy. And um, we don't know what Amechi himself will be doing now. Is Amechi going to be supporting uh, uh, <laughs> the PDP presidential candidate, endorsing Atiku, like we have seen Wiki endorsing, uh, you know, uh, someone openly? I mean, if you were the Lagos State PDP governorship candidate, what would you do? Well, we've heard that Jan Doe, who is the governorship candidate of the PDP in Lagos State, has denounced an endorsement by uh, uh, Wiki. But from all we can see, and his body language and the uh, president's wife talking, it's very clear that Wiki has made his choice. Mm, he has. But let's still stay with the Wiki issue. I mean, uh, 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 Prof, is Wiki redefining politics and politicking in Nigeria? What he has done, endorsing Sonwolu, doesn't it even amount to anti-party activities? How should the PDP even be reacting to this? Well, well, I think there are a couple of ways in which we can look at this. You know, one is to understand that political processes are essentially defined by individuals. And of course, you have different shades of individuals. You know, some of them um, can, uh, can be reconcilable. Some of them can be good peace builders, consensus builders. You know, and some of them can be tough, strong characters that if you dare or mistakenly offend them, you might find them um, irreconcilable, you know. I will situate Wiki within the bracket of a very tough, strong character who really wants to lose in any situation. And that might not be, be a suitable um, disposition for um, a complex, you know, a political process like ours, you know, that is often 
characterized, identified with fluid, some levels of fluidity, some level, levels of changes, as the case could be. You know, but that's how I situate him. And because of that, you know, PDP has found itself offending him, and they are finding him difficult, you know, um, to appease. You know, that's the situation we are, we, are, we are in. And of course, it's not like he has said severally himself. It's not just at the ordinary governor. It's an is the governor of the oil rich river state, right. and of course, he has Gongu disposition, which is bringing to bear. <coughs> you know, I don't know what more PDP can do to assuage him. At the moment, it just appears as if PDP will just have to tighten his belt, find ways of pulling ahead without uh, Wiki possibly, you know, with respect, greatest respect to him, while the rest of us will begin to watch him and see uh, where do his, his, his politics is going to end. Is he endorsing Tinubu? Of course, it's an indirect. He may not directly be doing it, but it could be a step in that direction, okay. you know. But right. I see Wiki as somebody uh, who, at the appropriate time, if he has to go for Tinubu, I mean, he will not hold. He, I mean, he will he go for it back. straight away. He won't okay. hold back. It, right. it doesn't look like a hypocritical person. He goes straight for right, uh, so whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Uh, Samna, would you think that this is a political suicide? And some would say. Governor Wike is not saying anything new when it comes to PDP Lagos State. Uh, the House has never been in order. They've never been able to win elections mm -hmm. since 1999 in that state. And talking about the statement we referred to, the PDP camp has reacted. Uh, they say they are calling Governor Wike's bluff. Uh, they said if he couldn't stop the emergence of the candidate popularly known as Jan Doe, he cannot stop him from winning. How reassuring is that bluff, really? Uh, well, <laughs> I think uh, Olajide Adedinro, who is popularly known as, uh, as Jando, knows that he's contesting against an incumbent. Now, uh, this incumbent has been meeting with Wiki at different executive meetings and all of that. And you know how difficult it actually is to defeat a sitting governor in Nigeria, although it's happened recently in Oshun, where PDP, I mean, defeated the sitting governor. But in this case in Lagos, uh, Lagos has always never been won by PDP, despite being at the best of times. But when you see PDP going into this election as a divided house at the national level, it's also affecting the uh, fortunes of the party in a state like Lagos. So, well, it's good to actually call the bluff of uh, Nyesom Wike, but Nyesom Wike's actions too also would have consequences because I think that the party's national leadership would fight back. But is uh, Wike on a face saving measure? Yes, I can tell you that he is doing this because of his thinking that the presidency should shift to the south in 2023 and no longer go to the north and if you see some of the agitations that uh, wiki has been embarking upon he says uh, he's fighting for justice and fair play within the nigerian uh, political scene as far as he's concerned uh, the presidency should go to the south the national chairmanship should go to the south in his party but if they can't get the presidency in his party then of course the national chairmanship to go should go to the south so but are there going to be consequences for wiki in all of this in his party yes i can tell you they will but is this uh, also a, a factor to be contended with yes i can tell you that being the head of these five governors that, if you may call them rebel governors, have stood up against Atiku Abubakar and the party's national leadership. I can tell you that this is only comparable to what happened in 2014 when Atiku Abubakar himself led about seven other uh, governors to leave the People's Democratic Party. So, like I mentioned in, in another previous conversation, it looks like um, the same thing that happened with Atiku, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, trying to prevent uh, former President Gulag Jonathan from, you know, getting the support that he needed in 2014 and 2015. It's what's happening to his campaign now. Because I don't know what he can do other than, uh, you know, uh, just take things as they are and just move ahead. Because it's very clear from the body language of Wiki now that he's no longer prepared for reconciliation. This uh, chat is not all about Wiki. There are other issues. Let's talk about President Muhammadu Buhari. He'll be unveiling Tinubu's presidential campaign council on Friday. What, uh, both of you gentlemen, what should we expect uh, from that uh, unveiling? Uh, you know, come Friday. Uh, Prof, yeah, what well, are uh, expectations? Yeah, well, I, I think um, that the APC presidential candidate will be very, very careful, you know, because, yeah, I mean, he shares, he's on the same platform like uh, the incumbent president. So, 
um, if it's going to improve on the programs, on the, um, you know, the, the condition of the performance of the current president. Um, he has to be careful presenting it, you know, so I expect tact here. Yeah? You know, but overall, I think it's going to be more about, you know, the impact of personalities, you know. Um, the difference that his personality will bring, the kind of uh, influence his disposition, character disposition will bring, you know, to public administration, to governance, you know, will be more, much more important because um, the ideologies or their programs may not be too different, you know. And I, and I don't see him coming out um, to be very frontal, to be very categorical mm. with respect to changes that he's going to um, announce, you know, in terms of um, how we're going to proceed as a country. Otherwise, he will be offending um, the president directly or indirectly. And of okay. course, um, we're in a political season where hawks are around, uh, around, where interpretations, differentiated interpretations can be given to, you know, yeah, yeah. however he comes out okay. as the case could be. Um, so it's going to be interesting to watch. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, some example very quickly in 30 seconds. Tunubu today said to the president, I will honor your legacies. And then on Friday, the president will unveil Tunubu's campaign council. It looks like a smooth sail for the governing party, is it? It's not really. I mean, if you look at Buhari's body language, it's, I mean, his body language has been suspect. It's been suspect all this while about these issues and how the president has not fully, uh, uh, fully put his foot on the ground on the issues going on in the APC. It's good eventually to see that, uh, I mean, they finally settled some teething issues here and there. But Buhari needs to do more to support his party if indeed he's hopeful that the party would win in 2023. Because a lot of party faithful in the APC are confused. Uh, they don't know why it looks like um, you know the presidency doesn't want to come out with full force to actually uh, support his presidential candidate. Does it mean that the president actually had someone in mind other than the person who has emerged? And if you also look at the body language of the Tinubu political camp, it looks like they are afraid of selling the president's legacy. It's good to know that Tinubu is beginning to come out to say, okay, yes, they will continue his legacy, but you know, this is just coming out now. Previously, they would have just been comparing what Tinubu did in Lagos, what Shatima did in Borno, and are afraid to run to town you know, with the legacies of this administration. Whether we like it or not, APC has some areas to actually answer when it comes to their performance in government. The issue of subsidy is one that must be clearly spelled out because the decision taken by President Buhari that is going to remove it just before he leaves office, I think that issue is also suspect. Is it going to leave the next government that is coming in big trouble? Why hasn't this subsidy been removed since when he was saying that it's uh, you know, uh, 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 full of fraud. Why is it that some other critical issues, like, for example, the issues that have to do with the disposal of national assets, this same president told us that the several presidential jets that we have in the uh, uh, presidential air fleet needed to be disposed of. How come he's leaving government with so many of the presidential aircraft still right there? What is going to be the policy of the APC, for example, on the issues of stolen crude? We can't say that this government does not know anything about those who are still in the crude. So many questions okay. to answer. Well, Tinubu says he will, of course, uh, sustain the infrastructural mm -hmm. revolution of the Buhari administration. A uh, lot to <laughs> unfold in the coming yes. days. And Arise News, we'll be keeping our eyes focused for our viewers. We, we must will. thank we thank you both gentlemen. Arise News analyst, uh, of course, Professor Abiodun Adeni and our director of news and politics editor Somna Sambo. Thank you both.